You're sucking on it every day. You might as well know what it is. I'm John Cadogan, the founder of autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie car buyers save thousands on their next new car. Here's a pleasant thought. Car exhaust will kill you in at least four different ways. Three are quick and one is pretty slow. Number one, there's no oxygen in exhaust, so that's generally bad unless you want to suffocate. And even if you put the oxygen back in, there are two deadly poisons in exhaust that will kill you regardless. Number two, carbon dioxide. You know, people forget the number one greenhouse gas is also a deadly poison. Number three, carbon monoxide, an even deadlier deadly poison. And then there are, number four, the carcinogens. And you're breathing some car exhaust every minute of every day. We all are. You are sleeping in it, eating dinner in it, exercising in it. You're breathing it when you pay your taxes and when you help your landlady carry out her garbage. You're even sucking it in during life's more intimate moments. That's an awesome awesome documentary. Yeah, well, yeah, very good, friends. And the ending. I mean, who knew you could do that? Oh, there you are. The other day, I had this kid about 12 years old named Isaac. He tracked me down on the website and asked something almost no strident greenie, no government minister for the environment, and no car enthusiast is capable of answering off the bat. I have a project at school about car exhaust pollution and I am trying to find out the main gases that come out of the car exhaust and how they affect the environment. Can you help me? And if these questions are too hard, could you please put me in contact with someone who knows more? I love that. You know, 13 out of a possible 10 for young Isaac, especially for the bit about if the question is too hard. Let me off the hook gently, but mainly for having an inquiring mind. So my challenge to you right now is press pause and name the big three exhaust gas emissions in order that spew from the tailpipe of your car. Guess, press pause right now, write it down, I'll wait, and then we'll compare answers. Okay, let's compare your guess to the basic combustion chemistry. Here's how it works. Combustion in the beer garden, car exhaust for dummies. Here's what's going on deep inside your engine. Are we seriously suggesting there's a tyre on fire in your engine? How did it get there? Hmm? Perhaps we could try just a little harder. You don't think putting out the fire might be, I don't know, thermodynamically counterproductive? Every kilo of petrol, aka gasoline, that you burn converts into about 3.1 kilos of CO2 and 1.4 kilos of water as steam. It's easier to think about fuel in kilos for chemistry because the density changes with temperature. A kilo is about 1.4 litres, generally. And before you tell me that this doesn't add up, you know, the faux gotcha moment where you reveal one kilo of fuel can't actually turn into 4.5 kilos of products, you need to add about 3.5 kilos of oxygen in the air to burn that fuel. That's why engines have air intakes, remember? Mass in equals mass out for this reaction. Air's mostly nitrogen too, about four to one nitrogen to oxygen. So every time you burn a kilo of petrol, about 12.3 kilos of nitrogen gas surfs on through for the ride. So petrol, oxygen and nitrogen gas go in, nitrogen, CO2 and water come out. That's how an engine rolls, in theory. The answer to the question is, the big three tailpipe gas emissions are, in order, really warm but otherwise unaltered nitrogen gas, carbon dioxide and water in the form of steam. Unfortunately though, combustion's not perfect and some impurities are also produced, twisted freaks of the combustion world. Jump scare alert. 
some nitrogen reacts with oxygen to form oxides of nitrogen, NOx, and that's bad. That's what Volkswagen's Dieselgate scandal was fundamentally about, pumping up the performance by letting NOx off the leash. Some hydrocarbons also get spat out before they burn, so unburned hydrocarbons are also something of a problem. There's particle emissions, also known as soot, and carbon monoxide, which is a retarded, zombified, mutated thing that wanted to be CO2, but couldn't quite get there. And this is problematic also because it's a very deadly poison. Death is such a cheery topic. You know, CO2 will kill you at concentrations above 6%, regardless of how much oxygen there is left in the air. That's about 400 times the latent level of atmospheric CO2. But carbon monoxide is much more deadly. Just one third of 1% will kill you in about half an hour, and four times that amount will knock you unconscious in two to three breaths and kill you in under three minutes. Which is why gassing yourself with a car exhaust, intentionally or not, is so damn effective. Just to be clear on this, however, CO2 is philosophically different to all the other exhaust emissions. It's a direct consequence. A consequence of burning petrol or diesel, coal, wood, ethanol, LPG, whatever. You cannot engineer CO2 out. If you want that energy, you must break those chemical bonds. CO2 is the consequence. The only solution for CO2 is to do more with less fuel by making the combustion more efficient and or by making the machine itself more efficient by cutting rolling resistance or aerodynamic drag, etc. and or by reducing the mass of the vehicle, preferably by doing all of those things. The point being, there's no mad science that can abrogate the production of CO2. You burn, you get CO2 in strict mathematical proportion. End of story. The other minor exhaust byproducts can be subverted. You know, soot can be trapped, combustion can be managed to minimise NOx and carbon monoxide and unburned hydrocarbons. Catalytic conversion removes NOx from exhaust before it leaves the tailpipe. That's all doable and it limits the other emissions. There are mandated limits for these things, NOx, unburned hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide. Euro 4, Euro 5, Euro 6, every successive emission standard gets tighter on these negative emissions. Better quality fuel helps too, you know, higher octane ratings allow engineers to build more efficient engines, allowing you to do more with less fuel. And lower levels of impurities like sulfur in that fuel means less harmful byproducts coming out the tailpipe. In Australia, the adoption of these tighter standards is about seven years behind the rest of the developed world, which is an absolute governmental disgrace. Ford and Holden have lobbied very successfully for decades now to delay the adoption of tighter emission standards because doing that would increase the cost of locally manufactured cars. The trade-off is the environmental impact and the penalty paid in human health, you know, premature death basically, and that tells you a lot about the priorities of government and industry under the table. I'm John Cadogan. Stalk me on the internets if you want a new car cheap in Australia or click that link. Thanks for watching.